Joseph Stalin was one of the most evil men who ever lived. As the leader of the Soviet Union, he committed a string of atrocities and the Great Terror, which is also known as the Great Purge, was perhaps the most frightening aspect of his regime. The murder of Sergei Kirov was key to the instigation of the Great Terror. Kirov was a member of the Politburo, the head of the Leningrad organization, and one of Stalin's close friends. However, he had become increasingly critical of Stalin's agricultural and industrial policies. He was then assassinated on the 1st of December 1934 under mysterious circumstances, and to this day we still don't know for sure who killed him or why. But many believe that Stalin was behind the attack, including Alexander Orov, one of Stalin's agents, who said the following in relation to the incident. He, Stalin, decided to arrange for the assassination of Kurov and to lay the blame at the door of the former leaders of the opposition. Thus, with one blow he could do away with Lenin's closest comrades, who continued to be the symbol of Bolshevism in the eyes of the rank and file of the party. Stalin came to the conclusion that if he could prove that Zinoviev and Kamenev and the other leaders of the opposition had shed the blood of Kurov, he would then be justified in demanding blood for blood. It's also important to remember that Stalin was becoming increasingly paranoid at this time. The recent suicide of his wife had left him emotionally unstable, and as his industrial and agricultural plans failed to meet the party's expectations, he became fearful that he would be replaced. Stalin used the murder of Kirov to his advantage, purging the party of those he saw as a threat with the help of the NKVD. Several thousand people in Leningrad were deported to Siberia after being labelled oppositionists, and prominent politicians such as Zinoviev and Kamenev were secretly tried and imprisoned. In August 1936, Zinoviev, Kamenev and 14 others were accused of plotting the murder of the recently assassinated Kirov and Stalin himself during an event known as the Trial of the Sixteen. All 16 men were found guilty, sentenced to death, and shot. But this was only the beginning. Thousands upon thousands of other people were then subsequently arrested, tried, imprisoned, and shot. Once a person was arrested, they were deprived of sleep and subjected to continuous interrogation. The unrelenting prison regime broke down the sanity of all but the strongest and most determined, as the prisoners were subjected to a constant cycle of cold, hunger, and sleeplessness. Evgenia Ginsberg, a lecturer who was arrested due to her support of Trotsky, wrote about her experiences in later life. I was taken out of my cell three times a day, morning and evening to the lavatory, and before or after dinner for exercise. After the exercise I had more appetite and managed somehow to eat my dinner. The quantity was enough to keep one from starving to death, but the quality was such that it was difficult to stay alive. The food contained no vitamins whatsoever. For breakfast we got bread, hot water and two lumps of sugar. For dinner, soup and gruel, cooked without any fat, and for supper, a kind of broth reeking of fish oil. State prisons became more and more overcrowded, so thousands of prisoners were packed into trains and slowly transported across the continent to the labour camps in the east. Eleanor Lipper, the author of 11 years in the Soviet prison camps, described the conditions in these trains. We were given hard frozen bread to eat and a daily teaspoon of sugar. Water was a precious luxury, although it was usually swamp water and handed around in filthy pails. Sometimes we were so thirsty we tried licking the round iron plates set in the wall, which were encrusted with hoarfrost because of the cold. After 10 days of travelling, almost every one of us suffered from diarrhoea. Meanwhile, the trials continued and no one was above suspicion. Stalin even struck down Marshal Tukhachevsky, the commander-in-chief of the Red Army and a hero of the Civil War, along with seven other generals. Stalin had never quite forgiven Tukhachevsky for publicly criticising his actions during the invasion of Poland in 1920. Stalin justified the execution of Tukhachevsky and his associates by accusing them of being German spies which was hypocritical as Stalin had been secretly negotiating with Hitler for months. In total, historians estimate that around half of the Red Army's officers were killed, which is around 35,000 men. Having purged the Communist Party and the Red Army, Stalin covered his tracks by taking down certain members of the NKVD, who were arrested, interrogated and shot. 
prominent amongst the victims was Genrik Yagoda, the former head of the NKVD, who was accused of espionage, Trotskyism and conspiracy. In 1938, Stalin called a halt to the slaughter. He had destroyed the older generation of revolutionaries, leading to a more united Soviet Union. But the cost was severe. Thousands had been shot and millions of people were now rotting inside the Gulag. If you want to learn about the conditions and the horrors inside the Gulag, I covered this topic in a previous video. There'll be a link in the description and the comment section. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Other than that, it's goodbye from me until next time.